As with the Tudors, royal wedding nights were witnessed. And when a royal baby was born, it was equally important that courtiers were present to swear that the heir was healthy and likely to live. And the Stuarts would discover that you could never be too careful about getting this done properly. In 1688, dangerous speculation about failings in the royal bedroom would bring about the downfall of the king himself, James II. This bed belonged to James II's second wife, Mary of Modena, the Italian princess. But when I say that, I have to qualify it a bit, because the bed's actually a bit of a mishmash. Mary would have slept in it in the late 17th century, but the wooden structure holding up the canopy actually dates from the early 18th. Those are Mary and James's initials on the headboard, but they've been bought from another bed, cut out and slightly randomly plonked here. So it's not the greatest work of art in the world, but the reason that people have looked after it and repaired it and cherished it for centuries is because of what went on here. This was the location of the famous warming pan incident. The warming pan incident began with the announcement from St. James's Palace that Mary of Modena had given birth to her son. Usually, this would have been a cause for national celebration, but James II was extremely unpopular. He was autocratic, he was arrogant, qualities that most of his subjects hoped that they'd seen the last of when they beheaded his father, Charles I. But James's biggest problem was that he converted to Catholicism. Large numbers of his subjects weren't keen on returning to the Church of Rome. But now, with the news that James had a Catholic heir, there was a real threat that Catholicism would be back for good. In the eyes of the Protestant establishment, something had to be done. James's Protestant enemies put it about that his baby boy had died. And to cover this up, an imposter baby, a changeling, had been smuggled into the Queen's bed. This became a very elaborate story with all kinds of circumstantial detail. People even produced maps showing the route by which the baby is said to have been smuggled into the palace. This is ever so detailed. He came in here, they said, and he was carried through these rooms, round the corner, along here, through these rooms, and finally along here into the Queen's bedchamber. And how was the baby supposed to have been transported? Well. It was in the 17th century equivalent of a hot water bottle. It's a metal pan, you fill it with hot coals, use it to warm the sheets. And this is the infamous warming pan. As the rumors gained credence, James got more and more furious. Hoping to kill the speculation, he published the results of an official inquiry into exactly who'd been at the birth and what they'd seen. Now, clearly, this inquiry was a bit of a farce. There were 40 witnesses to this birth. And you can't even fit a baby into one of these things. But it was a good story. And this meant a lot of people believed it. The smear campaign had worked. And within months, James had fled the country. After James II was overthrown, the crown passed jointly to his daughter, Mary, and to her husband, James's own nephew, William of Orange, both of them strongly Protestant. These two, William and Mary, had been very keen on the warming pan story and had done their best to spread it about to damage James. 